Some people tend to forget, even though cantaloupes have a hard exterior, bacteria can still be spread. You can see, it wasn't easy to get down here, but Sarah and her family were able to take cover with a tornado approaching in this drain pipe. Police say the store was heavily damaged by gunfire and three weapons were found down the street at the scene. Hundreds of people traveled from everywhere to attend the Taste of Chicago. We have live bands, fireworks, and even though we didn't have any this year, we still have great fun. Just ahead on ABC 7 News, a big shakeup in the race for president as a one-time Republican frontrunner suspends his campaign. We'll have the latest. Then this week, a woman came forward claiming she and Kane carried on a 13-year extramarital affair. 46-year-old Ehab Arafe was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I've been there. He always told me to stay in the car, lock the door when he gets out, and... I, was, I just always had a bad feeling about that place. The shooting happened at about 9.30 p.m. The Connect store sits in the 500 block of East 133rd Street, which is very close to the Algel Garden neighborhood. Ehab RFA, who is a cell phone accessory wholesaler, was dropping off a package when he was shot and killed by intruders. Zaid Ehab, his son, is trying to deal with the loss of his father. I have four brothers I have to take care of now. I have my mother. I have to be strong, and everyone's telling me to be strong because I'm the oldest. It's just hard. Witnesses say several gunmen walked into the store and opened fire on what could have been an attempted armed robbery. Police say the store was heavily damaged by gunfire and three weapons were found down the street at the scene. Police are still reviewing surveillance tape from a video camera inside the store that captured the suspects and the employees fighting back. I was with him yesterday, but I mean, I wish I was with him when we left. From work. Somehow, I just wish I could have changed something. Reporting from Area 2 Police Headquarters, Lauren Ward, ABC 7 News. Some students may like to have longer school days, and others may not. But at UIC Prep, longer school days have already begun. Out of 10 Chicago high school campuses, UIC is listed as the highest performing school. Their ACT test scores are four points higher than the city average. We have an, an average school day that is eight hours long, and in that eight hours we are providing um, extra instruction in the core content areas, math, reading, English, and science. After months and months of going back and forth, the state labor board members finally conversed with the union, who explained that longer school days would violate their contract. But the Chicago Public Schools stated that it is necessary for their students to be successful. This is a first step in a long step, but we would hope that this means that the Board of Education honor our contract as written and negotiate it with us. That's all this has always been about. From the hearing this morning, it has been determined that students will stay in school longer for the next few weeks until the judge has made a decision. One father feels like children should be educated by teachers and principals, not treated like ping pong balls. I feel like the, the pressure has been taken off during the school day and allows them to have more recess, have more uh, time to learn, um, uh, be less rushed through the day. Reporting from Chicago, Lauren Ward, ABC 7 News. I'm 89 years old. All my, most of my friends are all gone. And these are my friends now. In danger of closing is the veteran of Foreign Wars Post. It was established in 1931. Louis Selly, who was a World War II vet, and other veterans of this post do not want to see it close. It's just not enough uh, money in the system anymore. Our membership are dying off. I, I can't tell you how many of my dear comrades have passed away since I've been here. Of course, the veterans do not want to see their posts close. But at this point, it may be their only option. Our membership uh, has been down. Uh, the, and people just don't have the money because of the economic conditions throughout the country. Post members have had successful fish fries and bingo nights in the past that brought in enough money, but now these events are not bringing in half of the money they used to receive. 
They've been taking money out of their cash reserves just to make ends meet. And now that has put the post in a $25,000 deficit. This is like family to me. I don't know what I would do uh, if the place closed down. A fundraiser will be taking place on Saturday at the Whedon VFW Post 2164 to help raise money to keep this post open. And these men have given their lives, some of them in battle, or carried wounds from battle, and are still supporting this post in our country today. It is my responsibility as a member of this city to do something and try to give back. Reporting from VFW Post 2164, Lauren Ward. ABC 7 News. Just ahead on ABC 7 News, a big shakeup in the race for president as a one time Republican frontrunner suspends his campaign. We'll have the latest. This is ABC 7 News at 6. I am suspending my presidential campaign. A big shakeup in the race for president, former frontrunner Herman Cain exits the campaign stage for the Republican nomination. His move follows accusations from four women, including Sharon Bialek of suburban Glenview, of sexual harassment. Then this week, a woman came forward claiming she and Cain carried on a 13-year extramarital affair. Even though Cain is suspending his campaign, he says he won't be silenced and he won't go away. Now the political jockeying from the other candidates begins to grab Cain's supporters. ABC's Karen Travers has the latest. A woman suspected of committing three bank robberies in the West Suburbs is now in police custody. The FBI said the woman was arrested after allegedly robbing a Chase Bank in Berwyn. Federal authorities believe the woman is also responsible for robbing two other banks in Berwyn and Lyons earlier this month. The revival of a Chicago holiday tradition brought the Christmas spirit to the Windy City. The Coast Guard Cutter Alder arrived in Chicago yesterday with a load of more than 1,000 Christmas trees. The trees were offloaded today and handed out to low-income families in the Chicago area. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Ward with the ABC7 News Team.